Hey Shubi Doodlers, how are you doing? Well, I am now uh, working away on my finished artwork for Walker, the boy who can talk to dogs, which is my new book, which should be out very, very soon. It should be out already. It's been delayed. And last week you saw me um, working on this one as a rough. And so today I'm going to show you how I go about um, turning this rough into a piece of finished artwork. So the first thing that I do is I get my uh, light table. If you want to know about that, click up here. I did a video about that. It's a light pad and I want to get it as bright as possible. There we go. So I'm using Langton Mold Made watercolour paper, hot pressed, grand satiné. This is £140, 300 GSM. You can see I, I've actually trimmed this off so that it'll fit under my scanner. And now it's down to doing the, the final drawing. So you may remember last time that I went and sort of stuck bits down there, which is why it's looking a bit odd coming through the page. So I'm going to start here. So this is Stella and she's kind of the heroine of the book. I, I don't want to give the story away, <laughs> but uh, I can tell you that her as a Stella is the heroine. She's a, a cockapoodle do. I'm not sure what the do bit is. Cockapoodle, of course, is a, um, a half cock spaniel and a bit of poodle, and that actually kind of plays into around about the third or fourth book that I have planned. So this is intended to be a series. Now here we have a tartan rabbit, so I've really got to get the eyes right. So she's really fixed on it. <laughs> Everything thinking, I gotta get that tartan rabbit. <laughs> and so it's kind of kind of get that expression and feeling so I suppose illustration isn't just about drawing it's 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 storytelling that's exactly what it, it's all about and so we're gonna want her collar the, the little name tag will be swinging to the side and I think I'm still not quite happy with this Part here so I'm just gonna do kind of like that that's a bit better oh, what did I decide I can't tell which bit is which that's sort of coming there isn't it that's right so that would be kind of coming down there and I think in fact I can get this up higher probably like that and then her tail and then the other leg will be kind of behind there somewhere. So see how that works. So she's got slightly sort of furry. So she's not smooth coated, but she's not wildly hairy. And then we can put a bit of grass hiding some of the paw there. And here we're going to want to have this paw is going to be coming around like that. That's looking a bit better, I think. I had various people on Twitter last <laughs> last week after my uh, video about you know doing the roughs, talking about you know ah uh, how much they hate drawing dogs' legs, and I do too. <laughs> I'm just gonna get gotta get over it on this job. I'm gonna be drawing a lot of a lot of dogs, and so this is kind of a little bit of hillside. So it's kind of like a silhouette of a hummock on the hillside and then I can have a few kind of little daisy things you probably think that's kind of not terribly um <laughs> good drawing <laughs> it, it's kind of an impression really I, I don't want to get obsessed that the, the character is what it's all about I don't want to get obsessed with drawing grass and flowers and things like that so now I can move on to the tartan rabbit so here we got we want two buttons for eyes and a button for the nose and, and the body is kind of held like that with a piece of string and it's kind of it's like a bag that's been tied up there and then we need these kind of tartan patterns and oh I'll have to get rid of that in Photoshop <laughs> that's how these things go and then this is coming like that 
and she's chasing after it. And down here we have this mad cacophony of dogs. And I, could, I really kind of feel that the book is sort of coming together now because I've been booked today <laughs> uh, to the end of March uh, for the Dumfries Big Dog Festival, uh, Children's Book Festival. Dumfries is in Scotland, so I'll be going up there. I'll take you with me if you like. Take some video up there and... Uh, and they have a children's book festival there now. It's in March, end of March. And I'm going to be doing quite a lot that weekend. So on the Saturday, I'm going to be doing drawing, how to draw dogs. <laughs> and then we're going to have, I'm hosting a draw off competition, which will be probably <laughs> dog based again. <laughs> and, uh, I haven't quite wait that well I only just found out about it today so I'll have to think about what I'm gonna do with that. And then that's on the Saturday and then on the Sunday I'm going to be uh doing my session on Walker, the boy who can talk to dogs. So I'll be reading and talking about the book from there, answering questions, that kind of thing. And and then also then we're hoping to have there's a lady I met in London in fact who is from Dumfries and she runs a an icing cake a cake making shop and um, and her cake making shop is in the old stables which used to be to belong to Robbie but Robbie Burns and um, the famous Scottish poet. And so, you know, that's got a great kind of book and literary kind of heritage to it, obviously. And so we're hoping that we might do a dog biscuit decorating <laughs> competition. <laughs> so that would be quite fun. Uh, and no doubt there'll be some kind of prizes. <laughs> Uh, now what did I have here? This looks like a funny little dog here. So. There we go. He's quite cute. I think just those little dots kind of are much better than trying to get eyes in because he's so little. And we'll have that forward and that forward there too, like that. This means so all the time you have to keep thinking what what's the nearest thing to you so you have to draw this bit first before you can draw that leg in there because it's going to be hidden behind and then that will go there uh you got another little dog here and we can have his tongue hanging out i think there we go that and we might see a leg down there or something so this is coming along um I'm trying to think what's the nearest one. and this is the great dane uh, they have such weird um ears i went walking this week I even come up here you can see i did some videos about going for walks and and i was walking along and there's a guy coming along and he had a great Dane. And the Great Dane stopped to sniff when the man walked on. And I had to walk right past this Great Dane. They are big, intimidating <laughs> creatures. <laughs> I know they're generally a bit sort of soft and stupid. <laughs> they have a habit of leaning on people. They kind of can't be bothered to I think a lot of Great Danes can't be bothered to go for a walk either. It's like too much effort. Um, but he was having a very interesting sniff on a tr at a tree. And so as I was going past, I could see the man was starting to look a little nervous. <laughs> but whether I, I was going to get attacked or something. So I kind of gave the dog a look and kind of said, 
hello and uh, he kind of looked at me he was far more interested in the smells obviously another dog had left a smell there he was far more interested in that than in me so that was okay but they are very very big dogs great days i'm gonna give him some kind of patches he's a bit of a harlequin this one and so just have to keep Oh, I'm not got this on the camera. I just have to keep drawing, don't I? Something went a little bit funny there. So um, anyway, let's see if we can get this one. Then I have to keep remembering to have these little tongues hanging out because that's a very doggy thing <laughs> when they're running. Um, and then I think I can fit another one in here. What have we got? That's that's that one and then and we need another one for the Great Dane there and then here I think we should have another tiny little thing maybe a little fluffy thing I think maybe like that and I think that that has pretty much got it all there and then I'm going to draw this kind of outline of the trees and hedges running along the edge of the field. So this is kind of the big field where the village has its kind of sports days and things every year. And then I'm, I had kind of church in there before, but I'm just going to have a steeple sticking out like that. I think then maybe with a weathercock on the top. And a weathercock is a north south east west thing with a kind of a cockerel, metal cockerel at the top, and the wind blows its tail in it, and whichever way it's pointing, that's the way the wind's blowing. And I'm just going to put some little markers down here and down here so I know roughly where the painting is going to fit and then I'm going to need to erase those pencil lines where I did those little changes I'm getting my paints out but all I'm going to use is this one here which is neutral tint I've been using it so much at one corner I'm just going to turn it around and so oh that's a bit dark I think there we are so I painted Stella a few times by now and uh, I'm getting a feel for painting her and so I'll just put a little bit in there like that and now I'm gonna kind of wash it out to soften the edge and then I think we're gonna want it to be kind of like that but again softening the edge as I'm going along pink tongue <laughs> it's not pink is it it's grey uh, so I'm going to add a little bit more in there. I'm just kind of dropping a bit more sort of colour into there. And then also it's be a bit darker under there. Uh, so I'm not going to paint enormous loads of field and stuff. Uh, so I'm going to make this bit of grass kind of obvious because I, I want this to kind of appear to be a like I said, you know, a, a rising mound, a kind of a hummock. <laughs> Hummock's a good word, I like that. Um, and then, and then I can work on the tartan rabbit. <laughs> so we're gonna make that reasonably dark. And we want some kind of extra washes going on, maybe a bit in the ears there. And now I'm looking back here thinking that needs to be a bit darker under there. Maybe a bit more in there, maybe a bit more down there. So this is kind of painting while it's still half wet, half dry. Oh, that's too dark, much too dark. So I'll 
get the tissue in on that and kitchen towel every watercolor painter's best friend how did i learn about kitchen towel it was prince charles <laughs> i remember him being interviewed about his watercolors and saying that he'd, he'd heard some great watercolor painter american watercolor painter was going to be coming to britain and Thought, ah, this is my big chance to get some lessons. So he invited him to have tea at the palace <laughs> and eventually plucked up the courage. Said, yeah. I say, Would you show me, old chap, <laughs> just how you do your clouds? And the uh, artist kind of went and said, Well, you just splodge some paint on here and then you lift it off with your kitchen towels. And you see, oh, that's cheating. <laughs> and it's you do whatever you do you do whatever you have to do to get the effects that you want and if it involves making clouds with a kitchen towel that's what you have to do so I think you need a bit of sort of shadow around there we're going to need a bit of shadow for Stella to maybe make that a bit darker even Oh, maybe that's too dark. And if that's going that dark, then that has to go that dark as well. And maybe just a little bit more coming up there. And then, oh, once you start, you see, you have to keep going. You keep building up that tone. So that's the rabbit and I think these leaves are going to need to be they could be primroses or something like that so let's come over to the pack so I think what my plan here I think is then I'm going to make the tops darker And then kind of fade them down so they have pale tummies like that and then some of these will be darker so you kind of got to juxtapose light and shade against each other um, I'm assuming this is a kind of a holy quinn uh, Great Dane, so that is going to be quite pale, but it's going to have darker spots. This can be a fluffy little thing, again, I think that can be kind of paler tummy. That works, yeah. So, here again, I can do that quite dark on the top, coming down dark on leg. And like that. That's a darker leg there. This one's going to be. I'm just going to make him a kind of a a patchwork kind of dog. Um, and I think this one can be quite a bit darker. Going to show up behind. There. I think this one can be a bit darker too. This is a kind of a sausagey dog kind of kind of thing there, and so that's going to be darker. Then this can be paler behind, and this could be somewhere in between. I think this needs to be a little darker to show up there so that's basically a first coat on all of them um, and now so I've made that nice and dry so that I can now kind of add dry on dry and I can kind of give a bit of shape to the whole thing now uh, I think this one here can have an extra little bits like that 
No, I don't like that, so I'm going to wash that a bit in there, maybe like that. Need to get that colour in there as well, all these colours and noses and things which I haven't really done properly so far. Get that into there. And I think this one needs to get a little darker over the top there then in that case. So we see those ears more defined. And that one there like that. So that then we can make this kind of Harlequin bit sort of show up more. And if we're quite judicious then we can put these darker splodges behind the ears to make them kind of stand out a bit more. And he's going to have some splodges on his paws as well. And probably just down his rump there. There, that's quite good. I like that. And then some of you will be thinking, this is all a bit... <laughs> if you stayed here this long, <laughs> you might be thinking, this, this isn't proper painting. This isn't, he's going over the lines. <laughs> and... Um, you know, it's not like a photograph, is it? And it's not quite like a normal cartoon, I suppose. It's not quite Disney. Um, this is my style. And when it comes to illustration, it's that personal style is one of the most important things. As a professional, you've got to be able to have a recognisable style. Something people go, oh yeah, that's... Uh, that's Shu Rainer, those are the that's the way he draws dogs. And and as I say, it's not about it's not about it being a work of art, it's an illustration and it's it's going with the story and it's trying to tell the story, it's trying to enhance the story. Um and for you know, not everybody can imagine things that well and so sometimes it's nice to have a kind of a, be given a picture of what's going on and, and also maybe in the text it hasn't been quite explained properly somehow so you know sometimes a picture can help to just you know put things in perspective as it were and um and a really good illustration a really good illustrator uh, particularly in picture books, I think it's slightly different with this in a way, but in a picture book particularly, then a really good illustrator will sometimes have a kind of a subtext going on, and the text is saying one thing, and you might find the the pictures are telling something completely different, <laughs> and um, you know so. In, which is there to confuse you or confound you or well, there might be completely different characters hidden away in the corner doing things <laughs> which just aren't mentioned in the text at all and that's kind of often the illustrator having fun but also adding a kind of a subtext to the whole thing so you know you might have animals having a romance or something in the background um, you know, but they might be kind of doing something that's complementary to, you know, whatever the humans are doing in the foreground. Now I know that there's a line coming down the middle here, and that's going to be the, the 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 page, gutter in the middle of the page. So I'm kind of aware of that. So I'm not kind of really worried about you know what's going on in here too much. We want a kind of a kind of a whooshness going on here. Kind of a hint of speed. And similarly we want some of that coming on here as well. And then I think really 
all I'm going to do is make this really really simple in the background so that you're not distracted and there's a blob there but I, I'm not bothered I can get rid of that in Photoshop you know once upon a time when I started before Photoshop had ever been dreamed of and you make a blob like that and you'd be in total panic you know quick quick get rid of it get rid of it and you know there's all these ways of getting um, watercolor off the page and, <laughs> and now nah so I don't worry I get it off in Photoshop <laughs> How times have changed. And I think when Photoshop first came in, I was so, you know, amazed by, by it. And you know, I don't know what. <laughs> so this is late nineties, and it's like, wow, look what you can do! And it was just, <laughs> let me play with this. And so, I think I started painting stuff with um, Photoshop in mind and thinking oh I can blur that out in the background and I can do this effect here and I can add that and it really got me into thinking in terms of layers which watercolor should you should think in layers anyway but um, but Photoshop really helped me think in terms of layers oh, it was quite hard to keep this all in the camera and just just painting away I'm not kind of really th thinking too much about <laughs> cinematography and camera work and things so I think I need a little bit more in there as well mm. so now it's just kind of thinking how can I make some bits stand out a bit more so if I zoom out adding more and the tartan rabbit needs a little bit extra. I'm going to say that's it. <laughs> well, that's a long one. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, make sure you click down here and, uh, and, and subscribe to the Shoe Random Drawing channel and keep coming back for more videos, generally on a Friday at 4 p.m., but sometimes others. And in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, practice, practice. Read my books. Why don't you go to Amazon and get one now? <laughs> In the meantime, you take care. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.